So open with me to 2 Kings chapter 4 and we will read, we'll read seven verses so just follow with me. Uh, a certain woman of the wives, from the verse 1, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditors is coming to take my sons to be his slaves. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me what do you have in the house? And she said, your, ma your maid servant has nothing in the house but the jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere. From all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour it into all the vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons. So who, uh, who brought the vessels to her? And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full. She said to her sons, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and said, and he said, go sell the oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons will live on the rest. This is the story of a woman that faced a serious issue. It seems like she had a setback after setback. I mean, she just had a devastating situation. Her husband passed away. She became a widow. And it's bad to be a widow in nowadays, but it was even worse to be a widow back those days because women was not, did not have an equal rights as they do today. And they were not, uh, they were not leveled on the same level in society. So being without a husband was even, was even worse economically, emotionally, and just, just, all around to be without a husband so she just faced a difficult situation she's in a difficult situation of her life she lost a husband a best friend a partner for life now she is at the big disadvantage and not only that it seems like at the li in the life of Job she gets another news after a bad news is that a creditor is coming after and because she's poor she has nothing to pay back with he is about to take her sons to be his servants his slaves to repay the debt and but she makes a right decision she comes to the man of God she knows that God has a solution she knows that despite of the issues she's facing despite of the difficulties and hardships she's she has in her life she knows one place she knows one person that can hold a solution and she runs to the prophet Elijah uh, to, to a prophet Elisha because she knows God works through him and she can receive an answer. Whatever you're facing in life, doesn't matter how difficult the situation in your life is, don't quit, don't give up, don't throw in a towel, don't just give in to depression and sadness and I'm all alone, don't just give in to self-pity, run to the place they can offer you help. Church is a place where you can find help because God is in the midst God says where there's two or three of us gathered together he is there go to a home group and you heard a testimony today as uh, Astasia and she went to her home group she decided not to face the problem alone she even though as she said as maybe ashamed and embarrassed she was about her issue it was a private issue but she decided to open up with the girls and 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 uh, ask for prayer and as she received prayer she went back to the doctor she uh was made well don't fight issues on your own in life surround yourself with people that can help you godly people that have a connection with God go to a leader to your pastor to your home group go with a, with a group of believers and pray together because God has a final say in your situation I want you to notice one thing about the situation she said that you know that he feared God a lot of times we think that just because we go to church, just because we fear God, just because we, we pray and we follow God's commandments and we try to live the best life, that the calamity of life, calamities of life, we will be able to avoid them. We will be able to somehow surpass them and escape them. And yes, it's true. If you live a righteous life, if you li live a life that you follow God, you follow His commandments, you follow His, His principles, you, po you follow His will, you will avoid a lot of issues in your life. For example, you know, if you don't drink, 
you won't get DUIs, you won't get, you know, you won't uh, uh, get in, into car accidents, you won't uh, get out of character and say things that you shouldn't say, S uh, say things that you hurt the family, hurt, hurt the husband, wife, hurt the kids, hurt people around. Just simply by following certain commandments, you avoid a lot of issues in your life. But even by doing our best in life, being the best that we could be, it's still we still could face issues and problems in our lives the only difference is that when you walk with God God will help you get through it when you walk alone you have to solve things on your own when you when you do life alone you'll have to face the problems alone but when you walk with God and like this widow she she and her husband they feared God when she came to God God had a solution for her life just because just because we go to church just because some uh, we pray that doesn't mean that everything will be perfect on the opposite sometimes life gets even harder but we have God who's supporting our position and he will see us through Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but God delivers from them all in Job in Job's life, Job faced a, a, a big issue, big uh, problems in his life. He lost everything, including his own health. But when he held on to God, he got restored completely and received double for his trouble. Amen, church? Bible says that I have not seen a righteous forsaken. When you follow God, when you hold on to God the best you can, God will see you through to your situation and to your problems. Amen, church? First thing that I want to uh, notice from this story is that don't focus on what you lost. Focus on what you have left. Many times in our lives we tend to, when, when things start going bad in our life, we tend to focus and get wrapped up in the things that are bad, the terrible situation that we're facing, the things that we've lost and it seems like all of our life is falling apart. But we forget that there are still things in our life that are good. Sometimes when we have a difficult situation in our family with a son, with a daughter or something and one of them is, is, not, doing, is not doing good and we forget about five or three or two that are doing good and we feel like the whole family is falling apart. It may feel like at that moment but we have to not let our focus be so absorbed in the negative in a in, in an area particular area that it's going bad that we throw away all the good that God is doing and that God is working in our lives even Job that lost everything including his own health still found one thing to hold on to and he said my God is my redeemer and he lives and if he wills he can restore all the things in my life and oftentimes in our lives we, we just tend to focus on this one area in our life that's not doing good and we begin to murmur and complain and whine and to come to God and say how our life is falling apart and we focus on that one thing but God is doing so many different things in our life and when we get consumed with the problem when we get consumed, we, we, we invite anxiety, we, inzi we invite worries into our life, we invite, uh, we invite uh, uh, you know, pressure in our life, we, we invite depression in our life and then we have a hard time believing for anything. But God needs our faith in order to bring us out of that situation that we're in. Don't focus on a problem, focus on a solution, focus on a vision, focus on a goal in your life and count your blessings. Don't just be so narrow focused on just one thing God will do miracles with what is left not what, what you lost so many times we focus I lost this I lost my business I lost my car my house got repossessed and this and that and we focus on so many things that we lost instead of thanking God for what we have and declaring that God is my redeemer like Job and he can restore all things in my life focus on the on the small things in your life focus on uh, focus on the on the things that are working things that are positive even if you don't have things that are working now remember the things that God has been doing in your life 
and thank him for for those things and move forward don't get stuck don't get lost with the things that got lost move forward and hold on even if it's a small jar of oil because God does miracles with what is left not with what you lost Jesus tells his disciples say this crowd I want to feed them feed the crowds and disciples say Jesus we we got nothing we can't feed this crowd says says no you you have something they say well all we have is uh, five, uh, five, five loaves of bread and two fish he says that's enough give it to me and I will do a miracle with it sometimes you might say God all my life is falling apart the only thing I have is my is my relationship with you is my walk with you you know I don't, I don't have a good relationship in a family and not a good relationship in my marriage uh, I don't have a good job or this or that hold on to that what you have some people come and complain and say you know oh I'm struggling my marriage so they're not they're complaining about their marriage be thankful that you are married there's many people that want to be married and they're not be thankful for the little things because that will help you to pave a way for a miracle don't focus on the things you've lost don't focus on the things that are in trouble don't focus on the things that are not working focus on the things that work thank God for it and believe God for more don't disregard your don't disregard the small things that are working maybe you know you want to have a job that's paying $20 an hour but today all you have is $11 an hour thank God for the job and thank God for $11 an hour God will help you get the 20. maybe today your business is struggling and you want to have more contracts you want to have a bigger contracts don't murmur and complain thank God for the little you have and God's gonna give you more maybe your marriage is in the rocky place thank God for the marriage that you have and God's gonna help you restore and repair your marriage maybe if your kids are not doing well thank God for the kids that you have because many people want to have kids but they can't many people uh, many times we yet have many uh, we have uh, kids that are doing well and we tend to focus on the on the one that's not doing well and 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 forget that God has blessed us with 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 other kids that are doing well and and and, and then progressing moving forward in life focus on what you have not what you've lost or not what's damaged because with what you have left God can take you forward and God can repair it restore it and multiply it amen number two he says shut the door behind you uh, Elijah Elisha says to that woman he said when you go into your house I want you to shut the door behind you and begin to follow the instructions I believe in Matthew in Matthew chapter uh, 6 verse 6 Jesus says this but when you pray go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret place and your father who is in who sees in secret will reward you in public will reward you God rewards rewards in public what was done in secret God rewards in public what is done in secret I believe if we to if we are to live a life of miracles if we to live a life of of breakthrough if we are to live a life of healing if we are to live a life of restoration one thing that must be constant in our life one thing that we must have in our life is a prayer walk is a life of prayer is we have to have a place we have to have a secret closet we have to have a closet we have to have a room we have to have a place where we shut the door and we spend time with God where we pray where we unburden ourselves where we forgive where we release forgiveness a place where we pray Jesus says pray so that you avoid temptation because if we don't pray we will be weak prayer paves a, a way a roadway to your miracles a lot of times people come to the conferences and the conference that we have and we see healings happen we see breakthrough and deliverance happen in the prayer lines and we think like oh if only I can get your prayer line if only I can have this man of God and that man of God lay his hand on me and I'll be healed I'll be delivered I'll be this and that uh, and my, my problems will be solved sure God uses men of God and the anointing of them but many times if you begin to listen to testimonies you understand that before they got your prayer line and received their breakthrough and healing 
there was a lot of crying out to God in a private place there was a lot of seeking God on a personal level saying God please answer my prayer God please touch my family God please touch my my daughter my son God please touch my business and there was there was a, a prayer it was a it was a it was a place of a shut door a secret place a closet where they cried out to God and when came time, when it came fullness of time, God answered that prayer publicly, what was done in private. Make sure that you have a prayer walk with God. Make sure that you have a prayer life because this is what's going to sustain you and bring you through even in the times of troubles. Every morning, Monday through Friday, we have doors open at 5, 6 in the morning at church. If you need a place to pray, come over spend time in prayer there's a music playing lightly on the background bring your bible bring your blanket if you need to uh, bring your coffee sit down and just spend time with God talk with God converse with God he's the one that can bring you out of the out of the mess that you got yourself in he's the one that can guide you and lead you he's the one that can give you direction he's the one that can open a uh, open a, that shut door in your life in your career in your business in your marriage in your life I think it's very important if we need if we want to see miracles in our life if we want to see breakthrough in our life to live a life of prayer Jesus always prayed Jesus prayed in the mornings Jesus prayed in public and Jesus prayed in the evenings that's why we, as a church we have a morning prayer we pray like we're gonna pray today in public as a congregation all together we're gonna pray for the needs we're gonna pray uh, for breakthrough in your life in your marriage in your business in your health and Jesus prayed it in the evenings. The Bible says he prayed all night. He's spending night on the mountain in a desert place with God. That's why when Jesus came back from the mountain and there was an issue the disciples couldn't solve, an issue with the, with the epileptic boy, Jesus spending time with God now comes back and he has a solution to offer because he was spending time with God. And we see a miracle taking place and the boy got healed and he got delivered from the evil spirit prayer our prayer life paves a way for miracle if we want to be like Jesus we got to live a life of prayer because prayer shows our dependency on God prayer breaks our ego and pride prayer removes the negative things the fear and doubt from our spirit from our heart from our mind and it helps us to set our mind on the right things. They, David says, I, I lift my eyes to the hills that were, uh, where my help comes from. In prayer, we're able to lift our eyes to the cross where, there's a, where Jesus purchased a solution. And he's, uh, he's purchased healing, deliverance and breakthrough in our salvation. When we live a life of prayer, we will live a life of overcoming in life. Prayer is a license for God for his angels for holy spirit to move in our lives prayer is a is that visa that you know when you have to go to another country you have to apply for a visa and they stamp they when when you uh, when you travel they, they there's a page in your passport and they stamp when you came in and when you came out into the country prayer is like that visa that allows Holy Spirit allows the angels of God to begin to come into your life and intervene on your behalf see in the beginning of days in the beginning of when God, this world was created man kind through Adam and Eve willingly gave this earth to Satan and his demons to rule so therefore now we as we as uh, as humanity as a mankind we have to invite and allow God and his angels and the spirit of God to begin to intervene into our life to give him the right to give him a passage in our life and prayer does just that in Matthew 26 41 it says watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak many times we struggle with different things we struggle with sin in our life oftentimes we fall into temptation is simply because our prayer life is weak our spirit is weak and our flesh is strong if we want to live a life of victory 
If we, will, if we want to get rid of sin in our life, get rid of flesh in our life, prayer is the answer. Because this is where God deals with us, deals with our hearts and begins to improve us, better us and cut those things that tie us down. And we know one thing, sin is a bitter root of all evil in life. Sin is the cause of all pain, hurt, sickness in this world. And when we get rid of sin, we get rid of that open door for Satan to destroy our lives. And the way we get rid of sin, the way we fight sin is in prayer, through repentance, through submission to God. Bible says in Timothy, submit yourself to God and Satan will flee from you. Through prayer we submit our heart, our mind, our body to him. In Jesus name. Amen church. You know many people deal with their problems on Facebook instead of taking it privately and dealing with, the, with God. Social media is not a place to vent, it's not a place to pour out your burden. Jesus says come to me and surrender your burdens. When we live a life of prayer we unburden ourselves. If you feel like you know the life has been tough, you feel like you're under pressure, you feel like you know you're barely hanging on, have you been praying? Have you been spending time with God? Because every time we come into the presence of God we get unburdened. Jesus exchanges our anxiety, our depression, our, our, our worries for his peace and he gives us his burden. Bible says he's light and it's easy. So I challenge you church, I challenge myself to be more prayerful, to live a life of prayer. In Philippines 4 6, do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be known unto God. Matthew 11 24 says therefore I tell you whatever you ask in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours. God rewards publicly what is done in private. Make sure when the time of reward comes and God has something to reward in private. We all want to give, we, want, we all want to be recognized, we all want to be honored, we, want, we, we all want to be rewarded. But God rewards those that in privately spend time with Him, that find that secret place with Him and, that, and, 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 they, and they walk with Him in a life of prayer. Amen church? In the other scripture Jesus says you do not have because you do not ask. If we want to have things in our lives, if we want to see an addition in our life, if we want to see God adding to our lives, we got to live a life of prayer. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to you. If you see that your life is not going forward, there is no addition in your life. Maybe there's only subtraction in your life and you feel like you're being drained. Begin to live a life of prayer because it might not happen first time you pray second time we pray third time you pray but if you live a life of prayer you will see because God is not a liar he cannot lie that God will begin to add to your life to your finances to your marriage to your business to your health when we live a life of prayer we will see an addition to our life amen church Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus in this place. But in this, in this scripture going further down, I want us to see and I want us to get a, an example of, of how to pray and, and, and what to do in prayer. Because what happens a lot of times, even if we do pray, we come to God, we come to God and we bring Him our problems. We tell God how miserable our life is and we tell God how sad and depressed we are and we tell God how uh, mistreated we are. We tell God how people don't understand us and and we we, we lament to God and we, uh, we we tell God about all of our problems and everything but one thing. 
what we want God to do for us. Many times our prayers turn into complaining instead of presenting God what really want, we want to see in our life. Now don't get me wrong, there is a place in prayer where we unwind, when we share our heart with God. But make sure this is not the only thing that your prayer consists of. What I want us to see from this, from this story is that a prophet told her, said listen, go gather vessels, all kinds of vessels, everywhere, from every neighbor and gather as many as you can because God's going to do a miracle in your life. I believe that the vessels in this story represent our visions and our dreams. We have to, in our prayer, behind a closed door, we have to bring to God as many vessels as we can to bring God our goals, our visions and what we want to see accomplished in our life. To bring God our faith so that He can begin to pour into it and begin to fill it. Many people pray with misery and doubt and fear in their mind instead of praying with faith. Many people expect miracles while their head is filled with misery. Many people expect breakthrough in, the, in when they pray, or, or many, when, yeah, many people expect breakthrough in their prayer, but their mind is filled with poverty and brokenness. When you come to God in prayer, when you unburden yourself, when you let go of the things that are weighing you down, make sure you just don't stop there. Make sure you let God know what you believe in Him, uh, him for. Make sure you present to God your visions and dreams, because visions and dreams are the language of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit works through the expectation and the faith that you hold in your heart. And if all the only thing you hold in your heart is, is a, a poor little me, how, how, bad I, how, how bad things are in, in my life, how, I, how much I lost, but there is nothing that you're presenting to God to fill, your life will, will remain empty. You have to present a vessel to God. And if there is a need, and if you don't have any, borrow it. Borrow it from your neighbor. Borrow it from the past. Bar borrow it so, because if you don't have a vessel to fill, uh, if you don't have an empty vessel to present, God has nothing to pour into. If you don't present a mindset of faith to God, if you don't uh, present to God a mindset of expectation and belief, and trust in him there is nothing he can fill that's why many people they get discouraged in prayer because that while they um while they pray they don't follow the principles that god said in his word to how to pray and therefore many many issues in their lives remain unsolved and their life remain broken because if we must come to god bible says we have to come to him in faith knowing that he is and he rewards those who diligently seek him, those who, those who go after him, those who present something for him to fill in his life. I'm, today I want to ask you, when you pray, do you present to God your dreams and your visions? Do you present to God your goals? Do you stand in faith for something? Or your prayer is just a prayer to unwind and to lament and to feel sorry for yourself. You have to have a moment in time in prayer where you present to God not just your problem but a solution but you present to God a dream a vision of what you want to what you want God to do for you and to believe it with all your heart borrow it from the past if you have to I remember the story from Joel Austin's, uh, uh, Joel Austin's mother when she got uh, when she got sick with cancer and doctors gave her a few months to live and she refused to believe the diagnosis and she decided to fight but the way she fought is she didn't come to God and say God doctor said I only have three months to live poor little me will you have mercy on me please God you know I'm suffering I'm in pain she didn't do that I'm sure she had moments where she felt discouraged and she she fell down and she she prayed to God God hears everything that we have to say and he understands bible says she he can sympathize with us all because he was a human and he went through the life that we live but what she did instead she found a picture 
uh, she found a picture in the past where she was healthy, vibrant, joyful, where she felt uh, the moment where she felt the, the strongest and the, she felt the most vibrant, where she felt good about life. She took the pictures and she made copies and she posted everywhere around the house on the mirror by her bedside and she hold, she presented to God an image that he that he, she was expecting God to fill she presented to God a vessel a vision a dream that she wanted God to pour oil into she presented God a vessel of faith not a vessel of doubt and fear and she said God this is what I want to see this is this is what how I want to live my life this is going to be the outcome of my life strong vibrant joyful full of life not what the doctor said she she had that image and she prayed and then for for some time things were getting worse we're not getting better but she held on to that thing she brought the vessel and said all I can do is bring the vessel the oil has to come from you and the time came where God poured the oil into her vessel. She received her full help and she lives still till this day and it's been a decade that, that, that over a decade that the, when, when, when doctors diagnosed her with cancer. If you don't have any recollections from your past of God when God did a miracle in your life, borrow it from the neighbors. Eli Elisha said go to go everywhere and go to your neighbors and borrow a vessel borrow a vision borrow it from a testimony maybe some God healed somebody else from cancer believe that God can do the same for you maybe somebody received somebody received an amazing breakthrough in their business go ask them for that vessel here's a cool thing is that when you borrow faith you don't have to return it back and another cool thing there's no limit for how much you can borrow keep on borrowing keep keep watching testimonies keep listening to the people keep, uh, that, that, that have gone through what you've gone through and succeeded keep listening to those that are, have overcame in their life feed your soul feed your spirit begin to borrow and bring as many vessels into the private room so that God can fill it so that God can fill it um, I remember you know we we don't just talk about these things in our in our church and in our life we live it i remember uh, when our pastor you know the division of our church is thousands locally and millions globally we believe for crazy things if you're new in this and in, in, in uh, uh, your first or second time you, you'll come around you'll see we believe god for crazy things we believe th uh, that we're going to influence millions globally for jesus we're going to influence thousands of people will be coming we're going to fill the, the biggest facilities in Tri-Cities and, and, and cities around for people that will come seeking God, seeking His kingdom, seeing His power and glory be manifested. You know, now it kind of seems, now it doesn't seem too crazy because we begin to see, you know, last week we filled uh, the, one of the biggest churches in, in, in Tri-Cities and then we even had an overflow. But take 10 years back when we there's only had there's like two pews that were here and that's all we had and the ch this church wasn't even filled it seemed crazy but we strongly believe that if you present to God your empty vessel faith expectation belief God will have no other choice but to fill it and uh and uh, last year and uh, when our pastor was watching a prophetic channel uh, of prophet shepherd Bushiri, and he shared a, a a video clip of a church that he's planning to build and the facilities and and a school uh f like for college for 5,000 students to be taught their uh, bible and the hotels around and all this stuff pastor came to us and said you guys must watch this you've got our leadership team together uh, our core team together he said you have to see this i want you guys to cut that clip out and i want you uh, from time to time remind yourself this is where we're going thousands locally millions globally thousands gathering together and uh, having big facilities having a, a big um, uh, bible school having just a massive operation from this place here and uh, and and i want you to see it every time you pray i want you to envision cut out this clip and occasionally remind yourself and live with expectation and faith and so we did cut out that clip and I do keep it on my computer on my desktop and from time to time I keep watching it. I just want you to play a short vision, a short version of that clip so you can see 
what it means to borrow a vessel if you guys can roll the clip this is the rendering of the of the building in the church the project that prophet shepherd Bashir is planning to build in south africa I just wanted to show you just a bit but I just want to show you an example what it means to borrow a vessel a vessel from your neighbor if you don't have a if you feel like you know you don't have a vision for your life if you feel like you don't have a vision for your home group if you feel like you don't have a vision for uh, uh, for your business for your marriage for your for your personal life borrow a vessel find your neighbor that has what you want receive from God the answer that you're looking for and believe God for it no it's not comedy it's not being jealous it's just putting it's borrowing a vessel borrowing a vision it's 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 presenting to God a form that he can fill because Holy Spirit he works through visions he works through dreams and if we come to God and we pray with an empty head he has nothing to fill or worst case even worse coming to to God and praying with the fear and doubt and and, and with images of brokenness with images of, of distraction uh, with images of failing marriage with images of failing uh, family with an images of failing business and career God can't work because he needs our faith to begin to do the things that we want him to do and sometimes it's difficult to manufacture things on your own. Sometimes you just don't have things to, to come up on your own. This is where you have to surround yourself with testimonies. This is where you have to surround yourself with people that have a big vision in life. People that, that walk with the great faith in life, big expectation. So you can start rubbing off on you. So you can start bringing those vessels into your private room and begin to pray and allow Holy Spirit to fill it. Give something for Holy Spirit to fill give something for Holy Spirit to fill come with faith and expectation when you spend time with God on a practical note now when I want you to notice something as they brought vessels the oil was flowing if you want to live in your life where Holy Spirit constantly flowing you have to live in faith you constantly have to give Holy Spirit something new to fill you have to give you have to give an expectation to him to fill if you want to live under the presence of God and flow continuous flow of the uh, his oil you have to give him something to fill don't settle for where you're at because the moment they stop giving the vessel the oil have ceased another thing when you when you in, in private uh, private time with God when you spend any time in God many times and I you know in my earlier days uh, when I was still learning how to walk with God and pray you know my goal was in my prayer to get to breakthrough to feel the touch of God to feel like I've broken through in the play how many know what I'm talking about it's just like when you feel like the sweet presence where you don't have to strive anymore you don't have to you just can relax and just feel his presence and just just enjoy yourself this was my goal at, in prayer is to get to the point to relieve my stress and my burdens Ah, thank you Jesus. Adios amigo. I'll be back tomorrow morning. <laughs> and then I've, then I've learned through different, different, uh, especially from uh, Dr. Yangicho and from uh, uh, Apostle Vladimir Manchan from Ukraine in the teachings of Four Dimension. I highly recommend the, that book to read. I've learned that this is actually the moment where you begin to present vessels to God. Because the anointing is flowing. The Spirit of God is there. And many of us we just we just, just just get enough just to relieve our burdens and to feel good about ourselves and to feel like we prayed 
and then we run to our work we run to other places we run to do many different things and I've learned something is you gotta stay long enough for Holy Spirit to pour his oil into your vessel you have to present different kinds of vessel you know present a vessel about your family how you want to see your family present a vessel about your finances your business how you want it to be your career vessels of your marriage vessels of how you want to see yourself because the vessels that you present will be filled with oil if you hand in in long enough another thing is that when we come to church and in the time of worship don't waste your time thinking about other things you already sacrificed to come here for an hour and a half you could have slept in when worship starts when we pray when the anointing starts flowing begin to begin to give God the vessels in in, in wor when worship starts you know and our worship team is amazing how many think our worship team is amazing when they begin to lead us into the presence of God and the presence of God descends don't waste a moment this is your moment this is the time when hope oil is flowing bring your vessel put it under and begin to fill yourself with faith with expectation that God I believe you are my healer when we're sinning God you are my healer I believe nothing is impossible this is the moment where you keep those images in forefront of your head and you worship God as though has he already done it this is the prayer that leads to a miracle this kind of a prayer is that leads to a breakthrough I want us church if you haven't been doing this if you haven't been praying first of all I encourage you pray prayer has many many benefits uh and and your life will your life will change just simply because you spend time with God because who who you hang around with that's who you become when you hang around with God you're gonna begin to have peace joy you're gonna live in breakthrough and victory in your life because that's who you hang around with but also when we pray let's have prayer of expectation and faith let's have proper things circulating in our mind not doubt not defeat not failure not sickness but images of health images of restoration of victory images of things going well in your life so that God can begin to touch them and fill them for his glory turn to your neighbor say borrow a vessel if you need to turn to your other neighbor so I'm borrowing a vessel from you today today we're gonna we're gonna pray we're gonna come before God and this worship team can come to the front as we're gonna go into worship thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come